Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about damaging winds, large hail, wildfires, and smoke as we carry you through the rest of the month. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is the overall map as of this morning, July the 21st. There's several features that I wanted to point out here. Uh, first, there's that cold front that made it all the way down to the deep south into uh, parts of uh, Corpus Christi into the Houston area. Down to the south, they have some instability with a lot of heavier rains and showers and thunderstorms. That will actually be lifting off into the northeast as we go throughout the, the next uh, several days. We have an area of disturbed weather here. The, the National Hurricane Center actually gives a 20% chance of development uh, that's more or less a warm low that's off that boundary again so you always look on the south side of these these tailing fronts if there's any like quick spin ups and uh, this is going to be continuing uh, to move off uh, over time into the into the northeast so we have to watch this area but a lot of this is going to be over uh, water we do have a, a boundary up here to the northeast that's going to be the focal point for some very uh, damaging winds and large hail uh, through the northeast as we go along the I-95 quarter as we get into the afternoon hours. And we have some instability up here up in Canada that's filtering in into uh, Minneapolis uh, this morning as the, the, the monsoon will continue to remain active and probably amplify, especially as we get into Friday uh, end of the weekend for uh, those areas. So. Let's uh, zoom in and what they're also dealing with is the smoke. Unfortunately, this is, we've got a ton of wildfires out here in the Northwest, out here into the West. This is the smoke index is what we're looking at later on this afternoon. And that plume is getting caught up in the jet stream and where these darker reds and darker purples are, that's the indication where you're gonna be see the heaviest smoke. So it's a good amount of smoke that's gonna be filtering in to much of Montana, filtering in all the way down to Minnesota, into the Ohio Valley, even in the Northeast. So I know yesterday the skyline in New York City was just horrendous with that haze, the air quality. I mean, they're gonna be dealing with that again, along with the severe weather, that's going to be impacting but even down here in the central plains into the south even dallas has a poor air quality today because some of that smoke is even filtering in this area and even colorado so it's affecting a good chunk of the country uh, with those wildfires because just there there's so many of them here's the actual current map uh, as of july the 21st i mean and look at all the dots here over 80 wildfires currently at the moment i mean there's 1700 you know firefighters that are just continuing to add more it's just a vicious cycle it's very difficult to keep up with this and the darker uh the the red shaded areas those are your larger fires so we've got fires all the way into uh, alaska parts of uh, arizona nevada colorado i mean uh getting into yeah, yeah colorado california washington oregon idaho montana those were all the those were all the the, the heavier uh, more persistent uh, fires have been but let's take a look at this because it's just a vicious cycle and a lot of times the weather can create its own fires so what typically happens is uh, we've got the wildfires and it you know air gets sucked into those wildfires lifting up the smoke the smoke plume rises and cools creating what they call those pyrocumulus nimbus clouds and as it as it lifts, the water vapor condenses, you know, forming those clouds. And then as it comes down, it has some of those downburst winds with some of the lightning strikes and the lightning sparks the sparks that fire and just creates that vicious cycle again as it as it, you know, with more smoke. And then as it gets lift up, the smoke gets caught up in the jet stream and the wind to down to the surface will just carry it through and keep jumping and jumping and so that is the that's the difficulty of what they're dealing with and look at the lightning uh impact today so from the from as we go into the heat of the afternoon again well, some of these areas that are experiencing the wildfires again yes they could see some of those lightning strikes and a lot of these areas up here is what they call dry lightning so that's the vicious cycle the firefighters are, are dealing with and it's it's just very difficult to contain those fires in that type of atmosphere. But unfortunately, that looks to continue 
uh, for at least another week or two as the monsoon will continue to remain active. And a lot of these areas up here in the Pacific Northwest uh, will continue to remain drier, unfortunately, as well. But down to the south, we're going to be dealing with some, uh, some bigger thunderstorms uh, today as we kick off uh, the afternoon hours. But if you take a look at the latest uh, high resolution data, and I like this map because this takes over of what uh, the rain could look like over the next 17 hours uh, it, through essentially midnight tonight. And so we've got that feature down to the down here off into the Gulf of Mexico. Most of that rain is going to be over water, but it's going to be spreading some heavier precipitation more or less along the coastal regions and to South Texas and to Louisiana. Uh, Mississippi and Alabama and especially into Florida where they've got kind of a one-two punch with this feature down here and it's also this warm low is going to be close enough nearby that's going to be kicking off those showers and thunderstorms but up here in the northeast yeah things could, could start getting really active especially around say two o'clock time frame for the northeast especially along the I-95 corridor getting into New York City, Boston, Jersey, all these areas along the coastal regions here could start to see some uh, some damaging winds, uh, some larger hail with these as the monsoon will continue to remain active out here in the Four Corners regions. But this time, a lot of the rain is going to be spreading into Durango in southern utah as well so that's going to be just more even more prevalent as we get into uh you know later on this week especially end of the weekend for that region but here's your wind gust uh later on today as these thunderstorms keep uh, start to uh, fire up along the coast there's our bullseye along the uh, the northeast that's where they could be experiencing some of those 60 plus mile per hour winds as those thunderstorms start to erupt i do feel by one two especially like three o'clock in those areas we could be looking at some, some strong to severe thunderstorms and then out here in the end to uh, the four corners regions there's those higher wind gusts as well with those downbursts and that's along with the lightning that's going to kick off some uh, flash flooding but the smoke and the and the and you know the wildfire is going to be persistent uh, as you get further off to the north under the drier uh, vegetation. So there's your setup from the Storm Prediction Center. That's why they highlighted the, the slight risk for severe weather right along that afternoon hours. We're, get, we're talking into places. Yeah, New York City, you've been, you've been hit hard this month. You're going to continue uh, to get pounded again into Philly, into Boston, into New York, and especially into New, uh, Jersey City. These areas could be under the gun for mainly the damaging winds, but with that core, cold core aloft, yes, we could be seeing some of those uh, larger hell producing thunderstorms as well. So that's not out of the question. If you could be under the gun for some of that quarter size, even baby ping pong size hell is not out of the question with some of these storms uh, later on this afternoon. And, and a lot of these storms down here into uh, the deserts, the deserts, basically Phoenix to Tucson, these are more or less damaging wind type storms with a lot of lightning. So not really hell producers uh, for them. So as we transition into uh, that Thursday, the zero Z is, is about Thursday around seven o'clock timeframe on a Thursday, man, you, there's the boundary. We'll slowly start to lift northward as we go through time. Uh, and then the, the orange is depicted on that's the drier air. So we have a ridge in place that's been prevalent, that's gonna be lifting off into uh, Idaho and Montana, and that'll eventually spread into the Dakotas regions, but it continues to remain active into the desert Southwest at these boundaries will be more or less off into, uh, on, the, on the Southern sides of uh, the coastal regions, especially into Florida with that kind of that one-two punch that we talked about. Uh, that's, the, that's the day on Thursday, but there's your heavier rains. Yeah, it's going to be more or less prevalent over the monsoon regions of, uh, you know, getting into Arizona, uh, parts of uh, New Mexico, into, uh, you know, Colorado here, as well as uh, Utah here. Could see some of those heavier rains and flash flooding is definitely a concern for the for these areas and as we get into friday i just think it really just amplifies even more in those areas as the ridge starts to slowly build over the uh, the north central plains here and that'll eventually start to creep into the central plains as we get into the weekend and that's the indication where that orange is you're going to start be drying out 
over a lot of the central plains area so there's you know the precipitation gets it gets pressed on either side of it so that just more or less just intensifies the the, the monsoon even more because it just moves the precipitation over that region and uh, and then it spreads it off into the east as well so a lot of it will be spread uh, and start drying out over the central part of the U.S. and then continue to be persistent over the desert southwest as that boundary, too, will continue to remain active uh, for Florida. So there's your setup for Friday with that slight risk of heavier rains again. So we're not, we're talking, you know, half inch, one inch at, at times, and that's all it needs, this area, to cause some significant flooding uh, to be an issue so and, and you have a lot of these areas almost have little to no warning when it comes down off the mountains uh the lot of the drier vegetation uh it, you know it, it's it's a kind of a dangerous setup uh with these monsoons and unfortunately it looks like it's going to continue for a pretty good chunk of the week and even in the next week as uh, as we go into saturday i really start to see start to see it starts to really take over into that four corners regions well that will become more or less the main story with a lot of the heavier rains as the ridge will slowly start to build uh over the plains and then we go into that sunday time frame it just dries out even further uh for texas and then uh the, the, eventually the ridge will start to dominate but it continues to remain active for the northeast i don't think that goes away because you're going to be well away uh, from this ridge so more or less the highlighted uh, areas of the south southeast and getting get into the northeast will be continue to remain active but eventually that tr that ridge is going to be taken over for the southeast and be starting to dry them out as we go into uh next week so there's your high temperatures for monday i do feel dallas fort worth uh, finally ends their streak of not seeing a hundred degree temperature. I do feel that record uh, that uh, gets broken on, you know, the, the Monday, they finally reached that triple digit part, uh, but it'll, it'll start heating up over the, over the central part of the U S in a big way. So a lot of these areas that are experienced the cooler conditions and the much cooler uh, July is going to be coming to an end, unfortunately. And they're in real summer pretty much comes ashore and it's really going to be starting to intensify as we go throughout the week because this ridge starts to dominate first it starts to build over the central plains uh by the time we get into tuesday with with triple digit heat is a pretty much almost a certainty uh under that under that ridge of high pressure and then it just expands all week as as the drier as the air starts to dry on a daily basis and you get 100 degree heat it doesn't take much to kind of just amplify the situation and just really intensify that heat so i do feel a good chunk of the country will start experiencing uh well above average temperatures as we go through these towards the end of the month with that dominating ridge just starting in the plains but then expanding over time and uh we're we're if any anywhere under this close to the ridge here that's where we're going to be that's where you're going to see the sinking air and the rain prospects quickly go down in a big way under that type of atmosphere and that's why the climate prediction center has already highlighted just a drier look as we go towards uh the end of the month but you can definitely see the monsoon remains active for them so that's they're going to be experiencing the above average precipitation while a good chunk of the country is going to be starting to dry out and look at the temperatures it's kind of the same thing where where the where the rain and the clouds are going to be that's where they're going to experience the below average temperatures in parts of the monsoon areas but where that ridge is going to be more prevalent and more dominant, that's where the higher temperatures are going to be and the higher anomalies. So, yeah, a good, you know, 80, almost 90 percent of the country is probably going to be above average as we go to uh, the end of the month. There's your rain prospects over the next uh, 10 days. Uh, yes. Bullseye right here into Arizona, parts of New Mexico, get into portions uh, southern uh, Colorado, especially like into the Durango area. Could be looking at a lot of flash flooding happening over the next uh, week as uh, where these whites show, that's where the ridge could fly. So it starts here, lifts northward, goes over the Dakotas and starts to sink. And as it sinks, it just expands, it starts to dry out. Kansas, Oklahoma, into Texas, where those boundaries lie along the coastal regions, it continues to remain active 
uh, for the for the southeast at, in the beginning. But I think as the ridge expands, as we get into the end of the month for the southeast, those areas are going to be trying to dry out as well. And then all the precipitation will be forced away from that ridge. So I think Florida continues to remain active as well as the Ohio Valley. And yeah, the northeast, I do feel uh, you remain somewhat active as as well. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.